Hi, this is Terry Couty with Deep Sea Foundation. I am here today with Dr. Daniel Liu with Cancer Treatment Centers of America in Chicago. Dr. Liu, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Terry. Absolutely. So we are in Chicago at Plastic Surgery The Meeting 18, and I want to talk to Dr. Liu today about something, it's a word I want him to take and describe for us called medical comorbidities and how they relate to healing and the outcomes of breast reconstruction. So Dr. Liu, can you give us a description of medical co comorbidities and then kind of run through some of them with us? Sure. I'll let you take it away. Thank you. Absolutely. So in the simplest terms, medical comorbidities are usually chronic health problems that a person may have um, usually pre-existing and before the diagnosis of breast cancer. Um, in our specialty, we do a fair amount of reconstructive surgery mixed with cosmetic surgery. And in cosmetic surgery patients, we're careful to choose or select patients who are healthy to undergo an elective operation. However, that may not be uh, the case when it comes to breast cancer, since nobody decides to get breast cancer. True. So, when patients come to us seeking advice uh, regarding surgical procedures for breast reconstruction, um, it's very important to review that person's medical history, um, certain habits such as smoking or tobacco use, as well as medications that they're taking. All these variables play a role in how a patient heals after surgery, and we want to try to minimize potential healing complications as much as possible. That could mean anything from an infection to wounds that develop after surgery, um, and to worst case scenario, um, an implant that needs to be removed or a flap that doesn't heal because of poor blood flow. Because we know blood flow is so important for these flaps to survive. Yes. And so much can affect that, which is what you're talking about, so yeah. Correct. There are some things that we can control and some things that are outside of our control. Okay. So the things that we try to control or optimize prior to any major surgery, especially when it comes to breast reconstruction, uh, number one in my mind would be smoking. Absolutely. So patients who have smoked in the past or the recent past probably should not undergo immediate breast reconstruction we will work with these patients to help them quit smoking as well as use of all nicotine-containing products which can constrict blood vessels and lead to poor healing. We usually recommend waiting at least three months of nicotine-free period prior to any surgery and that usually decreases the risk quite substantially. Some other factors that play a role include obesity or being overweight over a certain body mass index and different surgeons have different criteria regarding the safety of certain procedures. Yes. And we will help a patient lose weight or meet weight loss goals prior to a major surgery. And then there are some things that are um, not quite within our control, like diabetes, which is a chronic health condition that can lead to infection and poor healing. There are medications that we can prescribe with the help of a family doctor or endocrinologist to improve uh, one's hemoglobin A1C or glycemic level, sugar levels over time prior to major surgery. There are some other rare disorders like blood clotting disorders and connective tissue diseases yes. that will impact healing. These are quite uncommon. Uh, they're not necessarily contraindications to surgery, but we must know about them to appropriately counsel our patients and recommend one procedure over another in some cases. Right, because all of those individually can, can affect the outcomes of the reconstruction. And if you bring breast cancer into the mix too, then you're kind of almost, it seems to me you're almost dealing with a little bit of a double whammy there. Absolutely, Sometimes. yes. We know that having cancer, but more importantly being treated, with neoadjuvant chemotherapy, for example, can uh, diminish a person's immune system, and that's very important in fighting infections after surgery, as well as helping tissues heal. You gave us some great information today about this. So, and you know, uh, for the viewers, these are things that you can take to your own consult, and uh, 
you know, it's part of that shared decision making conversation that you can have with your physician at the time of your consult for your restroom construction. Dan, Dr. Lou, thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate it. Of course, thank you, Terry. All right.